Welcome back everyone for another daily market update. It's Rod with Power Group. Today is Wednesday, September 9th, and we have a market rally on our hands as the title of the video suggests. And in today's video, we're going to discuss this market rally and whether or not this is the dip to buy or whether or not, how long this market is really going to last, how long this rally is going to last. Because in my opinion, I don't think this is the dip that you want to buy. And personally, I think that they are shaping up for a bull trap. So I'll share my screen with you guys. The first thing I wanted to share with you folks before I jump into, I, I'll show up, a, I'll bring up a couple of trades that I made today. Today was a fairly quiet day, but before we jump into the charts and the, the news, just make sure to like the video if you enjoy this content and consider subscribing. So taking a look at the uh, Yahoo Finance article here, so you'll see that tech was rebounding after three days of selling and AstraZeneca actually released some information that their clinical trials were put on hold. So uh, Stat News reported late Tuesday that the late stage trial of COVID-19 vaccine candidate at the University of Oxford, blah, 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 is being put on hold due to safety concerns of some suspected serious adverse reaction from a participant in the UK. So these are the, these are the things that come along with rushing a vaccine and I don't know about you guys, but even if there was a vaccine today, I still wouldn't take one. But you need to keep in mind that this isn't going to be a smooth rollout and there's always going to be hiccups along the way and this shouldn't come as a surprise. That was one thing that I was concerned about is whether or not this was going to be safe and whether or not it was going to create even more of a panic. And it seems like that's the, uh, the route that we're taking. I saw that Alberta in Canada is uh, suspending school for two weeks due to a breakout in, in the sickness. So we'll have to monitor the economic responses and recovery of the economy. But right now it's, it's pretty bleak looking, not going to lie. Tomorrow we have the important dates, uh, important events for tomorrow, which are the economic events for the U.S. initial jobless claims. So there, are, it was 881,000 just under a million last week, and they're forecasting 846,000 tomorrow for this week. So we'll see whether or not that comes through as a meet, uh, as a as a miss or a beat. But I wouldn't be surprised if there was more jobs lost this week than uh, than the previous week, because we're starting to see a lot of a lot of negative news back into uh, the media lately and I don't see it stopping anytime soon. So taking a look at SPY on the monthly, you can see here we are still coming within the Bollinger Bands. We are forming a bit of an indecision candle here on it and we have decreasing volume and taking a look at the weekly, the weekly we're still looking for a weekly higher low. We still have yet to test EMA support. So one thing I wanted to highlight that we didn't break the high of yesterday. So the high of yesterday was 342.64 and today we hit 342.46. So we need to break the high of yesterday to confirm that the daily bounce is underway. And if you watched the video yesterday, I took some positions in Canopy Growth and Hexo. Those are up fairly good today. I think I'm up about 5% on each or so and uh, just a small position looking to accumulate uh, those positions. Other than that, uh, I was basically all cash going into this morning and I was going to swing spy long, but I, I just wasn't sure where the market was going. So I decided to, to not trade what I didn't understand, go with cash and it ended up working out in my favor. So what I did was is this morning um, I bought FNGD, which is the FANG inverse ETF, which I'll explain why I bought that in a minute. But if you take a look at all of the big tech, large cap tech names, they weren't really participating in this rally as much as you would think, or as much as they would have been a couple of weeks ago when SPY was going up two, 3%, we would see Apple up five, 8%, right? So SPY is up 2.3% and Apple's only up four. Taking a look at uh, Tesla, Tesla's seeing a nice bounce here. It's up 11%. So it, it did have a slow start to the day, but it's picking up steam here now. But I did enter FNGD at uh, 1038 and I entered a QQQ short with SQQQ, which is the bear ETF at 24. And I entered the SBXS bear ETF for SPY at 555. 
And like I said, I, I just, I don't think that this is the, I don't think this is the dip to buy just yet. It, it smells like a bear flag, looks like a, uh, sorry, a bull, flag, uh, bull trap. And I'm not convinced we still have yet to change the hourly trend. The EMAs are, are curling up here. So it looks like we're, we're forming a bit of an hourly bull flag. If we can hold those EMAs and get that EMA bull cross, then that would put us up to around the, the 248, 250, or sorry, the 348, 350 level on SPY as a target. And we did see some rotation into XLV today. So I'll just bring up um, XLV chart here so you can see we saw some rotation. We, we didn't pull, we didn't, we formed a higher low every single candle on the five minute to start the day. And then we, uh, we sold off, we formed, there was a lot of ascending triangles forming uh, today as well. So you can see here, there was an ascending triangle on XLV. There was an ascending triangle on SPY back here. There was an ascending triangle on US oil. And you can see here, there was also a rising wedge, which we broke out of bearish. And now we're, we were stuck in a channel here, almost went from a, from a rising wedge, sorry, to, uh, to a falling wedge. And this is more of a, cha a channel than a, than a wedge, but you can see here that we broke out of that channel. And now we're just looking to, uh, to confirm that as support. And oil definitely, the oil bounce definitely ha helped the, the spy bulls and equities and stocks in general. And tomorrow we should uh, have a better direction of where oil's headed with the inventory report. So next on the list, I did want to mention SPY. The previous all-time high was 339. And you can see here, we basically were forming an inverse head and shoulders on the five minute. And we broke above. And that's why I said, I think it was a bull trap because we pulled back significantly. It took quite a while to, to grind up there and we just flushed back in about five candles. So again, we're, we're still seeing lots of, uh, of momentum to the, to the downside and downward pressure. And in about, you know, in about uh, four minutes, we're going to be closing the market for the day. So it's, uh, it's definitely looking like the bears have control right now into the end of the day. We'll check back here in a few minutes and, and uh, see what, transpires. But one thing I did want to mention, we did have a gap to fill, which we did fill on SPY. So the gap fill was 342. Let's take extended hours off here. So gap fill was 342.29. So we did fill that gap. We did hit 342.46. So we filled the gap from on the way back up. And one thing I wanted to mention as well is we have another gap down here from this move from today. And the gap there is 335.50. And we also hadn't formed a higher low on the hourly all the way up. So if you take a look at SPY here, we're looking to form an hourly higher low now, but it could also be a, a bull flag. But if we pull back any more on this chart, I would start to be a little bit worried on the chances of that actually coming to fruition. So usually a as long as we hold the 382, so we can pull back to about the 337.75 level and still be looking at an hourly bull flag. But I'd like to see it hold the EMAs and this sell pressure toward the end of the day is definitely worrisome. You can see here that we have increasing, increasing uh, bear volume and we're about to break the low of the previous candle. So next, I wanted to uh, highlight QQQ on the on the daily, sorry, that's the weekly. Wanted to highlight QQQ here for a second. So you can see here, we hit exactly, I noticed this this morning, we hit exactly 270, which was the 50 moving out, 50 day moving average. And we bounced off of that level. So a lot, you can bet a lot of people who are looking to buy the dip, definitely were looking to buy it there. And we saw eight, an eight, $9 move off of that level. So Congrats to the bulls who were entering on a play of the 50 day moving average. QQQ on the weekly, you can see here that the, the weekly is not looking too hot at the moment. It's, um, here it is here, sorry about that. So taking a look at the weekly, you can see here that the stochastic crossed bearish and the MACD is very close to crossing bearish as well. And if this price 
does not, if we don't hold 272, so if we close below 272 by Friday at the end of the week, if we're below 272 at end of day on Friday, I would be very, very cautious as a bull and very, very aggressive as a bear because I could see a lot of downward uh, momentum at that point. We don't have a higher low here until the 255 area on QQQ. So I just wanted to mention that. Um, and also one thing I wanted to mention, oh wow, look at that volume coming in here. So definitely looking like a bull trap at this point. So like I said, I entered SPXS at 555. It's now at 567. I'm planning to swing that overnight. What I suspect is they'll likely gap this thing down into the end of uh, into the end of the day. So we just close. So we close at the the level 339.75. So that was a crucial level. That's where the selling started yesterday. So we we it's going to be an interest, interesting day because. It, yeah, it's because so many people have bought. So I'll just do a quick, uh, a quick story of what my friend said. So a friend of mine bought Tesla, and I'll bring up Tesla here. So they bought it around four hundred dollars after the stock split. So you can see here we split on the thirty first, and then we dipped based on um, the five million dollars that they raised. And a friend of mine actually bought it right around here when it started to dip, it dipped to the 380, 380 level, and then it started to bounce. And my friend loaded up in the 400s. And I wish he would have consulted me first because that's, uh, I, I probably would have had something to say about that um, because it's, it, we, we didn't really pull back considering how much we had run. And what I suspect, what I suspected was they were going to, to, to make it like uh, uh, so attractive to buy the dip. So many people were going to buy the dip and then they were tank it even more. Those people who entered on that initial pullback were starting to feel some, some comfort, right? If you entered at the 400, you would have closed the day around uh, 420, uh, 425. So you would have started to feel good about that investment. And then the next day, they had a huge gap down on the news of, of Tesla not making it into the S&P 500 this go around. And now they're underwater. So anybody who bought after the share split around $400 or below is, is now underwater, right? So now what I think is happening is we didn't see that much of a rally today in, in big tech across the board. We saw that uh, Tesla was up 10% here. So Tesla was kind of the anomaly there, but um, what I suspect is going to happen is they're, they're probably, most people who are down on positions don't want to sell until they at least break even. So what I think is going to happen is they're going to keep this thing range bound, if not drag it lower, and we'll have to see how SPY and QQQ reacts tomorrow as well, but I wouldn't be surprised if they, if they just you know, chop this around and, and bleed this out a bit more because those people who are looking to get back to 400, they're underwater, they're, they're biting their nails, they don't know what they want to do, they're holding, should I hold? How red do I let this trade get? And then what they probably are going to do, the money managers and the, and the fund, the big hedge fund guys and, and Wall Street crooks, they're going to just bleed this out and, and shake those people out. We don't have any support down here on the daily until 273. So a long way to go. We could still drop another 25%. And I guarantee you a lot of people don't have the stomach to, to, to weather that. So we'll see how it goes. Maybe I'm wrong. This isn't financial advice. Um, you're tuning into this channel just for educational purposes in my view on the market. Um, so like I said, SPY gap, uh, gap filled at 342 today. We didn't have an hourly trend change. Um, we had ascending triangles all over the place, SPY, Apple, um, Tesla, gold, XLV. Taking a look at the dollar as well, I wanted to highlight the dollar. So the dollar's bouncing now. We had a bit of a, an inverse head and shoulders here with the neckline. We, we tried to break out. We basically triple topped at the 93.30 level and could, be, could have been a fake out. 
and then a bull trap in SPY. We'll have to see how this breaks overnight. But if we can get over that 93.30 level, I expect a lot more downside in, uh, in stocks going into tomorrow. And the economic data tomorrow for the job report is going to be super important. Uh, taking a look at VIX, so the volatility index, VIX was spiking toward the end of the day. So you can see here we formed a five minute higher low and higher high. So we're in a five minute uptrend. We topped out just at uh, 2940 resistance. And you can see here we have a little bit of an upper wick forming, but wouldn't be surprised if we, if we see a bounce underway into tomorrow as well on VIX went from oversold to, to overbought there in, uh, in just a few candles. So that's, uh, that's it for VIX. Taking a look at what else that I have for you guys today. QQQ also has a gap fill, um, a gap that has yet to fill. So taking a look at the hourly chart, you can see here we have a gap from the low of 283.40. So SPY filled its gap. Will QQQ fill its gap? I'm not convinced at this point because like I said, given the fact that SPY and everything else was running so hot. We saw some rotation into XLV I could, and XLE, the energy sector, um, because of oil getting the bounce going. I could see QQQ not filling that gap and, and just trending lower because of how hot, that it's, how hot it's run, how, how big this bubble has really gotten. And I, I could see a lot more downside. You can see here we are also forming a little bit of a rising wedge on QQQ. And that broke. And we also had on the hourly, I did want to highlight that we didn't have an hourly trend change yet on QQQ either. And to start the day, we had hourly de uh, decreasing uh, bull volume. And now we're starting to see increasing bear volume. So certainly not out of the woods yet. And you can see that's a nasty, uh, a nasty candle, a nasty volume on QQQ to end the day. Um, so taking a look, there's one thing I wanted to highlight actually on the dollar as well. So the dollar did double bottom here at the 93.20, we hit 93.21, 93.22, and then we bounced. So we did break that by about one penny, but trying to double bottom there, we'll have to keep an eye on that. And taking a look at did want to highlight spy one last thing on spy for you folks so we do have we did have a hourly downtrend into the end of the so we we formed this the, sorry it was a five minute downtrend then we went into a five minute uptrend and then we set a five minute lower high and lower low so it's just super choppy if we can if we can hold if we hold below the 344 level, 345 level on SPY, I would say there's a lot more downside to be expected. And if we can get over the 345 level, then I would say that the bull trap is no longer in question. And the last thing I just wanted to bring up is the SPY chart on stock charts. So taking a look at the weekly on SPY, you can see that the stochastic also cross bearish. We held this, this support of the 10 week moving average at 333. So again, if we don't close, a, if we close below 333 come end of day on Friday, then I would expect a lot more downside. You can see that the weekly MACD is trying to cross. So we could be in for a few weeks, if not months of pullback, if this does play out and I think that this week is going to be in a very, very important week for stocks and SPY didn't quite test the 50 day moving average at 330. We got to about 332, 333. So we'll have to wait and see how the day shakes out tomorrow. But other than that, that's pretty much all I have for you guys today. Consider liking the video if you enjoyed the content today and subscribe to the channel and tick the bell. You'll be notified on any future updates. Again, it's Rob with Power Group. Best of luck for everyone going into tomorrow and we'll check back with you tomorrow on another daily market recap. Have a great day, everyone. Take care.